All right, let's see how you can use a CO2 meter to assess the ventilation in a room, in a home, school, conference centre or church. CO2 meters were developed to assess air quality for two reasons. First, a high value can indicate that the gas itself might cause problems like headaches, dizziness and even breathing difficulties. The recommended limits for spaces and they include 1000 parts per million or ppm for schools and 800 ppm for offices. The limit for a safe working environment is given as 5000 parts per million. Secondly, in an inside space, a CO2 concentration is a measure of the breath concentration and so also gives a relative estimate of the risk of transmission of an airborne disease like COVID or influenza. The air we breathe out contains something like 30,000 to 50,000 parts per million of CO2, about 100 times higher than in clean air. As a result, we can estimate how much CO2 will be exhaled by, for example, a healthy adult breathing normally, and that works out to be about 360 litres per hour. For many types of standard rooms, the recommended ventilation rate is 30 cubic metres per person per hour, about 100 fold excess. Here are three CO2 metres that I found to work pretty well. They generally give similar readings under the same conditions, and also the values seem to be sensible. Really, this is not true for all items on sale. The one on the left is battery driven, but can be operated while being charged. The one in the centre is powered by a USB cable, which can be linked to a mains adapter or to a computer. It automatically stores readings hourly as a data file which can be read out and processed, for example, uh, using a spreadsheet. The, the device on the right also measures particulates and volatile organics. It can be paired with a mobile phone and graphs displayed and then they could be captured. This is a reading typical of clean air, outside air, the air that you want to use for ventilation. Inside a room, a balance will build between people's breath with its hundredfold increase in CO2 and also the clean air from the ventilation. The reading here is typical for what monitors to label as good, generally indicated with the colour green. At 800 parts per million for this particular monitor, the colour changes to yellow and that this gives a warning that at about this kind of value, the dilution of breathe, breathed air by ventilation is dropping to the factor of 100. We recommend that you definitely keep the CO2 level to below 1000 parts per million, the value recommended for schools. Above 1200 ppm, the display changes to red, and on this device the air quality is described as moderate. At about that reading, the pre-breathed air is around 2%. Please avoid a sustained display of the serious sign. Remember by 5000 ppm the toxicity of CO2 is an issue. So what can you do to reduce the risk of your breathed air? It might not be very appealing to have air where the concentration of stale air rises above 1%, especially if there is a period of high disease prevalence. A first option is to improve the ventilation. You may need to add fans to drive this, perhaps by a floor standing one, a pedestal or, as in here, a tower fan. The fan is best placed near the air inlet to draw the clean air in. But there may be limits as to how much ventilation you can provide. A reduction in CO2 level by a factor of five or so may well be feasible though. Secondly, remember that masks greatly reduce the transmission of airborne disease particles on aerosols, the aerosols of our breath, and also carriers like dust. They do not absorb CO2, the molecule is far too small. The reduction in transmission of disease though may be by a factor of 10. Thirdly, you might introduce air purifiers. 
They also do not absorb CO2, but they greatly reduce the carriers of many disease types aerosols, bacteria, pollens and smokes and dusts. And this also improves the air quality and reduces disease by an additional factor to the other mitigations. By how much depends on the capacity of the purifiers compared to the room size. The industry standard factor is called the CADR and this number is based upon the reducing the concentration of cigarette smoke in a room by 80%, so that is a reduction to 20% or a fifth. This is only an estimate, but purifiers of the CADR number could be matched to a room to provide a reduction of disease bearing particles by a factor of about five. An increased provision of purifiers would increase this value. So let's consider the effect of having these three mitigation options. This is just one of many combinations you could use. But imagine the room that you're meeting in and you want to have people there is flagged by the CO2 meter as having it been a moderate hazard with a reading of 1301 ppm in this case and is shown in red. An option then is to improve the ventilation represented in this graph by a fan. Potentially that could reduce the CO2 level down to a good or green band and also reduce the disease carriers to a very similar extent. Then you could add a second mitigation and here I've taken the example of air purifiers. That does not affect the CO2 level but that is not necessary with the improved ventilation. It does though reduce the disease carriers towards what would be expected with an extremely high degree of ventilation. Finally, if people are wearing masks, the virus or other disease particle carriers might drop almost to the level of an open air. And that might well be necessary if the risk of infection by a serious airborne disease is very high. In more general circumstances, using a combination of measures rather than a single one is probably easier to implement and solve the problem of gathering in a room with low air quality. As a result, such meetings can be made much, much safer and much more enjoyable.